when migrants are considered eligible for asylum, they use an app to apply for appointments at U.S. ports of entry. So that app is called CBP-1. Advocates and migrants have complained that it's glitchy, often freezing, and then even crashing. But a new complaint details the problems with the app when it comes to migrants with disabilities. It's the focus of Neelam Borum's Bora's report with the Texas Tribune, and she is joining us this afternoon to give us a little insight. Thank you so much for being here, Neelam. Thank you. So first, let's talk about what that complaint detailed and what those migrant advocates are saying. Yeah, so for the vast majority of migrants to access the asylum system, you have to make an appointment at a port of entry along the U.S.-Mexico border. To be able to make an appointment, you have to be able to use the CBP-1 mobile phone application. But the complaint says that migrants with a wide range of disabilities, uh, those who are blind, who are deaf, who might have an intellectual disability or a mobile disability, really can't use the app at all. So sometimes they have to find someone else to rely on it to do it for them. But that's hard because you have to be able to log into the app every day, sometimes for months in a row. So essentially, most migrants, according to this complaint, those with disabilities can't access the U.S. asylum system the way others might be able to. Now, the complaint says under the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, technology the government uses needs to be accessible to members of the public with disabilities. Um, and the complaint is basically using this law and arguing that the lack of accessibility in the app is violating federal law. Okay, so you spoke to Felicia Rangel Sampanaro, and she runs the Sidewalk School for Asylum Seekers. What are some stories that she's telling you about, about the problems that this community is facing? Yeah, um, for instance, she uh, met a blind man. He was traveling alone up to the border, and he needed accommodations. Somebody dropped him off to the sidewalk school that she runs, knowing that she is someone who is familiar with accommodations. And before they could even focus on telling him he needed to be able to use the app, they had to set up accommodations for him in general. A lot of shelter isn't accessible for people who are blind down at the border. There are other things that they had to deal with. And once he was finally settled, they said, do you know you need to be using this app to make an appointment? And he said, no, but he can't even use the app at all. And maybe if he finds a kind person who uh, potentially would help him for one week, they might leave and then he would be stuck again. So that's just one story she shared. She shared stories of a man with schizophrenia who was unable to consistently use the app. And getting an appointment is very difficult. It's kind of like a lottery advocates describe. So needing to be able to get on every single day to try and really ensure that appointment is very important. Um, another person who had facial paralysis struggled to use the facial recognition software in the app. Someone with cerebral palsy who had mobility issues wasn't able to actually use a phone to use the app. And so these are just some of the stories of a lot of migrants down at the border. And a lot of these organizations that are helping out these migrants with disabilities are seeing a lot of them partially because they're coming from places that have high rates of violence. And then lastly, Neelam, what are what solutions are being put in place to rectify this issue? Yeah, so I think there's two answers to that. I think for one, uh, people, this complaint is uh, having advocates hope that the government updates the software. So in the ways that you can make an app more accessible, maybe having a read aloud portions or things like that, uh, changing the facial recognition software in some way, uh, that is something that the government could do to make it accessible. And it technically shouldn't be a problem. Like you mentioned, this app has been updated multiple times. It's had glitches. It's had other issues. In the, past. Uh, the second solution is for some people, this app will never be accessible. So there needs to be more options than just using this app to get an appointment. And uh, some advocates say this includes being able to make an appointment in person at a port of entry with an officer. Um, there are some exceptions. People in theory with disabilities can prove to the U.S. government they need those exceptions, but it takes a very long time. And these are people who are really trying to access even potentially health care in the United States. Okay, Neil and Bora from the Texas Tribune, thank you again for joining us. Thank you.